I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, you're going to learn how to wire up smart port telemetry on your Matek F405 flight controller. Stay tuned. There's a lot to like about the Matek F405 flight controller. In fact, uh, if you want to know all the things I like about it, you can check out my review of it. I'll put a link in the video description. But don't go just yet. You just got here. What I want to show you in this video is how to wire up smart port telemetry to it. And this is one of the things to maybe not like. It's a small thing, but you see, smart port is an inverted protocol. And basically what that means is that the, the serial interface, the UART, is what we call them. The UART that receives the smart port protocol has to be able to handle an inverted protocol and on F4 flight controllers, they can't. This wasn't a problem with F3 flight controllers because on F3 flight controllers, all of the UARTs, they can just, they inverted, not inverted, they don't care. But on F4s, they can't. They can only handle non-inverted non -inverted protocols. And so you can't feed smart port directly into a UART on an F4. Now, one way to handle this, this is what's done by, for example, the Holybro Kakute. Uh, Holybro has just m m given you an S-Bus pad, which is a pad that you wire smart, or not S-Bus, smart port, a smart port pad. They give you the pad, you wire the smart port wire to it, and then they put an inverter on the board so that the protocol is passed into the UART and it's not inverted by the time it gets there. They take care of that. But Matic hasn't gone that direction. So we need to address that. We need to, there's a couple different ways we can solve that problem. I'm going to show you what they are. The first way to solve that problem is to use soft serial. What soft serial is, is it is a, a virtual software-based serial interface. The F4 processor itself is doing the, the ones and zeros. It's reading and writing the ones and zeros from a general purpose input output, they call them GPIO pin. The difference between soft serial and a hardware UART is that with the hardware UART, there's a, a chip that does all the logic, all the interpretation of the electrical signals to convert them from electrical signals into ones and zeros. The processor doesn't have to think about that. The UART just takes care of the work and it spits ones and zeros out. When you use soft serial, the processor itself has to look at the electrical signal that's coming in and figure out whether that signal is supposed to represent a 1 or a 0. And as a result, soft serial uses more processor cycles than if you're using hardware UARTs. But that's not a big deal on an F4. On an F4, we're running at like 4, 5, maybe 8% CPU utilization. We have plenty of processor cycles to waste on soft serial. It didn't used to be the case on F3 and F1 boards. We had to be a little more stingy. So there's no reason not to use soft serial. There's just no, you, there's no downside to doing it. You just go right ahead. The advantage of soft serial is that because the processor is looking at the electrical signals coming in and deciding if they're ones and zeros, we have the versatility to feed it either an inverted or an uninverted protocol. Doesn't matter. The coders just write the software to do whatever it needs to do. Unlike with a hardware UART, where if the hardware doesn't already understand inverted protocols, there's nothing you can do to make it understand them. It's hard coded. It's, it's built in. So soft serial can handle smart port no problem. Inversion is not an issue. The downside with soft serial is that you need to use resource reassignment to cause soft serial to you. There's no soft serial pin for you to solder to on the Matek F405. But Matek has got you covered here. They have got the command line interface. They've got the command line things that you need to type. You just paste them right in, and then you're going to solder the soft serial or the smart port wire to the motor 5 pad on the F405. Let's go and take a look here. And I'm just going to take the top of the frame off. And I'd like to, sh by the way, I, one really nice thing about the MMCX connector here on the Matek F405, this is actually the FC Hub VTX. Um, it, the MMCX connector means I can just, you wouldn't do that with a UFL, would you? And then I can just set this aside. Oh, very nice. And when I'm done, I'll just plug it right back in again. The S5 pad is right here. That is where you'll solder the smart port wire coming from your receiver. And that's pretty simple. Just run smart port wire to the uh, Signal 5 pad, done. The setting up beta flight, which is what I'm going to show you now, is just a little more complicated. It's not too bad, though. Before I go into beta flight and show you, though, I want to give Matek credit. 
Um, this is the product page for the Maytech F405. And it's more than just a product page. It's a great reference manual practically for the whole board. So, you know, you got a connection guide here that shows you all the different connections for it. And there is even a, a, a section for how to set up FreeSky SmartSport. And I really want to give them credit for this. Because so many products in this hobby have terrible, terrible documentation. Maytech has done a fantastic job with the documentation for this, and they really deserve kudos for it. So in Betaflight, I'm going to connect. And before I go into this demo, I do want to let you know, if you're paying very close attention, some of you may notice that this actually isn't a Maytech F405 that I'm using to record this demo. I'm actually in a hotel room, I'm on the road for work, and I didn't, I didn't bring a whole quadcopter with me. I didn't have a spare F405 that wasn't in a quadcopter. I put them all in my quadcopters. So if you notice a few little discrepancies, like if we look at the ports tab, uh, the Maytech F405 has UART 5, but this board doesn't. Those discrepancies are because this isn't, that's why. But don't, oh, and also you may notice right down here in the lower right, yeah, it's a SEAL Racing F4. So I just happen to have one of those in my pocket, you know, like you do. But that, the demo will be the same anyway, so don't worry. The first thing we're going to need to do is go into the Configuration tab. In the Configuration tab, you're going to enable Soft Serial, and you're going to enable telemetry and then save and reboot now that'll enable the soft serial feature but if we go into the ports tab this is where we would assign telemetry to the soft serial port uh, it's not there why is it not there and the reason is that we have not assigned soft serial to a pin a physical pin on the board in order to do that we are going to need these commands we're going to go to the CLI and we're going to enter these commands as shown right here. Resource motor 5 none, resource serial TX11 A15. Okay, so we'll go, let me just uh, copy of these, right like so. Let me go into the CLI. I'm going to paste that one in. I'm going to paste this one in. Like so. And then we'll do save and be done. Now that you've used resource reassignment to actually put soft serial onto the motor five pin, we see soft serial one right here. And the last step is gonna to be to enable smart port telemetry output like so, save and reboot, and that is it. Now, maybe there's a reason you prefer not to do it that way. Maybe you've got a hexacopter and you're actually using S5 and S6 as motor outputs. Hey, it's possible. Maybe, like me, you're just an old fogey and the idea of using soft serial bothers you. Why? There's no reason not to. We just never did that in my day. We had F1 flight controllers and there weren't any processors. The processor wasn't fast enough and it just makes me feel weird to turn soft serial on. I just don't know what would happen. I don't like to do it that way. So here's the other workaround. The other workaround is that you can, it's called the uninvert hack. Now, not every receiver can do this but if you look on my i'm not going to take it out of the captain tape but if you look right here i have soldered that so on the underside of the receiver now this is the x4r uh, you've got these two little ic's here and they have two legs on the top and one leg on the bottom and this leg right here you can solder a wire to it and that will give you the uninverted S bus signal. And what I like to do is I like to just get a little blob of solder on that leg. The leg is actually kind of, it's at a little bit of a right angle. So you can just get a little blob of solder sitting in the, in the corner. You can, here's the leg, right? You just get a little blob of solder sitting right here. And then I just press the wire up against it and just touch it with the soldering iron until it flows and it comes together. Some of you won't be able to do that, in which case you might should just do the other thing, right? The other the, the, the soft serial thing. Although, frankly, some people will struggle to solder to this just as hard. So I don't know. Maybe maybe you're just out of luck. I don't know. Um, yeah, so that's the uninvert hack for the X4R SB. If you look, um, I always go back to Project Blue Falcon's pages where I end up. Um, he's got a video showing the, pa the pad location for the XSR as well. You can just solder to the inverter like it's shown here and get the uninverted signal out. And then when you wire it up to the flight controller, you can wire it to any UART TX pad. So I'm using TX3 in this case, but I could, I got another copter where I use TX4. That's this pad here and this pad here. 
Um, at that point, the signal's not inverted anymore, so you just pick any UART you prefer, and it can understand it. Actually, that's not entirely true. I, by doing the uninvert hack on your receiver, you have allowed the UART to understand the incoming signal. Okay. Now the UART, which doesn't understand inversion, is receiving an uninverted signal, so it can send the signal to Betaflight. But the problem is that Betaflight is still expecting an inverted signal. So there's actually one more step, and it's very easy. In Betaflight, you're going to go into the command line. And you can see here I've typed get TLM. That just outputs all the commands uh, that have the phrase TLM in them. That's for telemetry. I just wanted to remind myself what the correct phrasing was. It's a good trick for you guys. If you kind of remember, oh, what was that command that had something to do with the accelerometer? I don't know. Get ACC for accelerometer. Here's everything. And you can just sort of look through and go, oh, yeah, that was the one I was looking for. Okay, so a little side tip. But the one we're looking for is TLM inverted. TLM underscore inverted. And what that does is it tells Betaflight whether the incoming telemetry signal is inverted from what it would expect. So this is a little confusing. I told you that SmartPort was an inverted protocol, and we just did the uninvert hack on it to allow the UART to understand it. So now wouldn't that mean that telemetry inverted off was correct? Because the telemetry protocol has been uninverted. It's not inverted anymore. Are you following me? Well, the problem is that's not actually what this means. This doesn't say whether the protocol is inverted. It says whether it is inverted from what it ought to be. So since smart port is normally inverted and we've uninverted it, we would type set TLM inverted equals on. If that all didn't make sense, just suffice it to say, if you're going to do the uninvert hack on your receiver and feed an uninverted signal into your flight controller, you need to go to the CLI and type this, and then, then you're done. Then the rest of the setup is absolutely the same as before. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the ports tab. You're going to pick the UART that you soldered to. You're going to enable smart port telemetry on that UART. And you're also, it may not have taken that. It did take it. So you're also gonna to need to go to the configuration tab and enable telemetry. I'm surprised it let me do that on the ports tab since I hadn't enabled it yet. But anyway, that's what you gotta do. If you've got the RXSR, it actually has a pad for uninverted SBUS and uninverted smart port and you can solder to them. They're really tiny and hard. It's, it's a challenge for many people to solder to them. If you're very good at soldering, it'll be no problem, but they're really tiny. Definitely use a cool iron to start with. Don't overheat them. You'll lift them in a heartbeat. But it is nice that FreeSky is thinking of us and putting the uninverted outputs on there to make our lives a little easier. And in fact, I, I've, they, there's an announcement from FreeSky about a new series of receivers they're coming out with their latest receivers, and they, they say that they'll actually be software configurable to use or not use inversion. Um, so that's nice for us. Of course, this is only a problem since we're using F4 flight controllers. When flight controllers start to have F7 chips more, they, they, there are a few out there, but not very many. When that starts happening, this problem will go away again because F7 chips have inversion on all the UARTs, and it's not going to be an issue again. But for now... We have a little bit of a problem. Uh, that's going to do it. That's how you do telemetry, smart port telemetry on the Matic F405. Leave any questions down below. Thank you guys very much for watching and happy flying.